everybody. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of Afternoon Drive On on IEC Radio. You can find us on the internet at icradio.media and download the apps, and you can listen to our wonderful music and also our other shows we have um, anytime you want, 24-7. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications. You can also find us on Abundant TV, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. I want to thank all of our awesome sponsors who have been with us for a very long time. We always tell everybody we have the best sponsors, the best guests, and we also have the absolute best listeners. And you guys are really it. We're going to bake a pecan pie today. I'm going to give you a really good recipe. This is like a really simple recipe recipe right here as well. And the pecan pie, the ingredients are three cups of all-purpose flour, and this is for the pie crust. So three cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of salt, three-quarter cup of vegetable shortening or lard. You can use butter in this if you'd like to. Um, Crisco butter flavor is really good as well. Three-quarter cup of salted butter. You want to cut that into pieces. One egg slightly beaten and one tablespoon of distilled white vinegar. And that vinegar really gives it a, a good crust. It makes it really flaky as well as if you use the Crisco butter flavor. Now, as far as the filling, you want one cup of granulated sugar, three tablespoons of brown sugar, one half teaspoon of salt, one cup of corn syrup, that can be light or dark, one third cup of melted salted butter and one teaspoon of vanilla, three whole eggs. My girls out here have some eggs for us. And then one cup, a heaping cup of chopped pecans. And that, I'm going to tell you what, that really makes it. Now, we would like our pecans actually chopped up into tiny. I put them in the food processor and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And so this is what ours look like. <laughs> and Phil likes it really good that way. And you can put actually a few more pecans in it if you do it that way. I keep them, uh, sometimes I do whole pecans as well. But this is really good to chop them up that way. And so let's go ahead and begin with the pie crust. We were talking about the ingredients for the pie crust. And again, those ingredients are three cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of salt. You want a three-quarter cup of vegetable shortening or lard. We mentioned that just a minute ago. Crisco butter flavor is really good. Three-quarter cup of salted butter. You want that cut into pieces. One egg lightly beaten and one tablespoon of distilled white vinegar. And all of these products you can use actually the store brand of Albertville Foodland Plus. Okay now I'm going ahead and make up a few pie crusts uh, and keep mine in the freezer. Now I've had this out thawing and uh, so, oh, this is just the right, right temperature right here. Okay, let's go ahead and get my uh, towel because you know I'm going to make a huge mess. <laughs> I always do. Now, one thing I like to do is either put a little bit of melted butter um, on the pan. And this is just an old trusted pan right here I've used for years. I don't know how many pies this thing has made. Or you can just get some of the Pam um, spray oil. And I use the Albertville Foodland Plus, their store brand, but they actually had this one on sale that wound up being cheaper. You know, we're always saving money. Now I like to get even right in here too, okay? Because the thing about pecan pies, a pecan pie is going to be a messy kind of a thing if you're not careful. And if it does overflow, oh, by the way, I've got the oven set at 350 degrees. I've got that going on right now. Now, I'm going to show you a real good, easy, easy way for your pie crust. Now, you got to make sure you got a little bit of flour. And again, this is just, um, so you can see the, yeah, the wax paper right here. So you can see the wax paper where um, I had it in the freezer. So I'm just going to use this. You don't even have to get out anything, any extra, no, no big deal. This is just an easy pie to bake. Okay, now let's go ahead and start rolling this pie out. I love this dough. This is like a really good dough. And again, I make up several batches of that. And so what I'll do is, and, and you can actually quadruple this pie crust. And that's what I did. So I wound up with about, oh, about eight pie crusts in the freezer. So all I've got to do is already done. So all I've got to do is just get it out. Now, if you, let's say the pie crust was just a little bit more frozen, I'll tell you something you can do. You can always 
kind of do this with the dough roller, okay? And that'll kind of flatten it out just a little bit more. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing flattened out. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn it over again. Isn't that just a beautiful pie crust? I like this. Um, now, I did go ahead and use the... Um, the lard, or not the lard, but the shortening, Crisco shortening, and Ike went on ahead and used the, and look, if it tears up, no big deal. All you've got to do is get a little bit of maybe water or something and put that in place. Okay, I'm going to flatten it out just a little bit more, and I'm going to show you what you can do. So you don't have to make a big deal out of a pie crust. You know, a lot of folks do. They make such a huge deal, and see, I've got a place right here that's broken. All I've got to do is put it together with my fingers. Now, the colder it is, and you need to be kind of cold now, okay, so it, it fits right into your pan. Let's see how good this is. And I, I don't have, didn't have to use a whole lot of um, flour to get it to do its thing. I want it to, I like mine not real thin, but I do like it enough to where it's going to go in that pan. Let's go ahead and move this over. Okay, now the reason I like to use, excuse that out of the way. The reason I like to use the Pam or melted butter in the pan is because it's easy to maneuver this pie crust. Okay, let's see what I'm talking about. Okay, now I've got this. Rocking and rolling right here. It's going to be such a good pie crust. And look, you don't have to be so fussy with it. Now, you don't want to do so much to the pie crust to where it's going to be, um, if you play with it too much, it's going to be kind of tough and you don't want that to happen. So that's why I like to do mine this way. See how I've got that knife and I'm going around here. Okay, here's some little pieces right here I'm going to use. And I've got a little melted butter. I'm sticking my finger in that melted butter. And see, that's going to help it to stay. And that way, I'm not just, you know, over and over and over using my fingers on this pie crust, making it tough. See, this is a good thing to do right here. You see what I'm doing? And I'm just folding it down because what I'm going to wind up doing is getting my fork. And see, I'll go around on the corners with the fork. Now one thing I like to do before I start putting the filling in here, I like to go on ahead and put this in the freezer while I'm putting the filling together. I won't be able to do that today because I've got to go ahead and get this baked. we got company coming over tonight so I thought I'd just go on ahead and start doing this. Okay, now I'm going to get my knife again and there I am. I see I'm going in the corners again. Okay, see what I'm saying? You can patch it up and make it work. Look at that. And then that way, again, you're not putting so much effort in causing your pie crust to be hardened. Okay, now I'm going to finish up with that just a little bit later. We need to go ahead and start working on the ingredients. For the pie. I would wanted to show you one other thing I like to do. Before I would actually throw this into the freezer, I like to go ahead and get my fork and just make these little indentions right here. One other thing you can do, um, now for a pecan pie, I like to, I don't like to pre-bake the crust any at all. But if you're baking, say, a chocolate pie and you're using some of this pie crust like this, what you'll want to do is maybe put some beans, dried beans, or you can actually get these little beads that people use for the pie crust. You put those in the bottom and then put it in the oven for about 10 minutes and then take everything out and then put your filling in there. So that's just one other thing you can do. All right, now let's go ahead and get started with the filling with this pie crust, this pecan pie. Okay, now you've got to melt, have melted butter. 
and which is what I've done. So we don't hit it. Melt the butter in the microwave, okay? Now you want to have it just melted. And again, you don't have to use a mix or none of that stuff. I just use this little thing right here all the time when I'm baking pies and even cakes. I'll use that. Now, one other thing I like to do, now these are my girls' eggs. So you got three eggs, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put the eggs in there. See how rich the eggs are? Um, if you're living in an area, you now if you're living in town and you may have some homeowners, homeowners associations that will not allow you to have chickens. Um, I live out in the country on 38 acres, so I can have all the chickens I want. So here I am, I'm mixing the butter with the eggs. And I want it to be kind of fluffy. You don't have to worry about mixing it until it turns a different color. Um, but mine are just, see how that goes? That goes does a really good job with that melted butter. Now, another thing I'm going to add is my sugar. Okay, so that's one cup of white sugar. And that's also a store brand, by the way. I don't like to use every little bit. Don't waste food, whatever you do. Okay, there's my sugar. All right. And here we go. I'm mixing that good. So you want everything mixed really well. And these little things right here are awesome. Find these at any department store at a really good price as well. Now this is this one of the surprise ingredients, and that is the brown sugar. And this is three tablespoons of brown sugar. We'll put that over here to the side. And here I go. Now your brown sugar, see, you're going to have to put a little bit more effort with it. And so here we go. Mixing that up real well. Okay. See, it's going to leave a few more lumps. But as we're mixing it, it's all going to go together. See, cooking doesn't have to be a hard, drawn-out, long effort to do. Um, and there's also salt. So there's one teaspoon of salt. I just used the store brand. Salt is salt, right? So that's teaspoon. Use the store brand and Albertville Foodland Plus. There we go. And the salt, I like using salt with any of my desserts because it kind of evens out everything. It's not so sweet that, you know, that causes you... <laughs> lips and pokes together like this. Have you ever had anything sweet like that and you just don't do it with salt? So the salt's going to even those flavors out. Okay, now I'm going to go in ahead and add my vanilla flavoring. Let's make sure I'm putting everything in there. I do my own vanilla flavoring, by the way. And I wanted to show you something. This is what a vanilla bean looks like. And I've had these vanilla beans in here for probably about three years. And so what you'll do, you buy these. I found these, I think, oh, at Albertville Foodland Plus. And so what you'll do is split the vanilla beans. I'll be able to show you better on this end. So you'll split the vanilla beans. And those, the vanilla beans are actually inside the stalk here. And then you put those in to whatever you're going to use the water for and um, for your mixture. Now you'll need to shake it. See, I don't know if you can see this, but down at the very bottom, right down here, are the vanilla beans. Oh, it smells so good. And I'm just going to tell you, this will last you for years. When we went to uh, Mexico. I'd won a trip through a company I used to work for. And so Phil and I got to go to Mexico, and everybody, before we went on the trip, everybody was saying, you've got to get some of that vanilla from Mexico. It's really good, and it's made exactly like I made this right here, okay? All right, now one teaspoon, mm, this smells so good, one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, and again, this is my own vanilla right here. Okay, I'm going to get these ingredients again mixed up really well. I think we're about ready to go into a commercial break. I tell you what, let's do our commercial break because we absolutely appreciate all of our sponsors. So let's go ahead and have a commercial break going on right now. Music 
the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience Southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256-634-2018. The only place I buy my beef is Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama. Their cattle is born and raised on their ranch, grass and grain fed, and you can feel confident when you serve your family and friends because their beef is all natural and no antibiotics or hormones are added. You can buy whole beef or perhaps go in with family or friends and buy half. Their customer service is number one as they take care of the delivery to their local processor and can deliver to your home for a small added fee. They also offer herd replacement heifers. I always call Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama for my beef specialty recipes and cookouts, and you can too. Food shortages are increasing, so buy local by calling 256-523-6462. That's 256-523-6462. Patterson's Music and Jewelry is a full-line music store offering guitar repair, setup and sound installation equipment, as well as instrument rentals and new and used guitars and amps. We offer jewelry at affordable prices and jewelry repair, watch batteries and link removal, and we offer personalized jewelry such as fingerprint, mother's rings, and pendants. Shop in historic downtown Fort Payne on Galt Avenue. Hours are 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and 9 to 2 on Saturday. Call 256-845-4115. That's 256-845-4115. And thank you for trusting Patterson's Music and Jewelry. Miracle Pottery. Each pottery item is hand turned from durable stoneware, clay body, and non scratch high fire glaze. Dishwasher oven and microwave safe. Our handcrafted dinnerware and bakeware will last a lifetime, staying just as beautiful as the day it was born. Each pot is signed first blue cross in thanks to our Lord, our name, and in the year. We say a tiny prayer for the receiver of each piece that they receive abundant blessings in their lives. It's not just about pottery. We're located in the foothills of Appalachian Mountains near Minton and Valley Head, Alabama. Miracle Pottery is nestled at the base of the hills at 7871 Alabama Highway 117 between Gadsden, Alabama and Chattanooga, Tennessee. Please go to our website, miraclepottery.com, for more info about our other getaway cottages. You can also call us at 256-635-6863. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and my employees and I want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support. With everything going on right now, your rest is so important. That's why we're having the biggest my pillow sale ever. Not only are my bed pillows as low as $19.98, but you can get the best body pillows ever. Regular $89.98, now only $29.98. Take your rest on the go with our Roll and Go Anywhere My Pillows for only $14.98. And we have our new couch and accent pillows. They aren't just for looks. They have My Pillows patented adjustable fill that gives you that amazing My Pillow comfort. In this economy, you get the best gifts ever for the best prices ever. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code and you get deep discounts on body, couch, bolster pillows, and so much more, including my original bed pillows for as low as $19.98. Please order now while quantities last. 
We're back. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of Afternoon Drive Home on IC Radio. We are your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications. Look at those eggs. See how beautiful this is. Of course, the brown sugar has a lot to do with that as well. But this is just a beautiful, beautiful pie. And uh, so, again, we're going to go over those recipes. Let's go over, let's go over the recipe again so it can show you what's in there get your pen and pencil handy three cups of all-purpose flour this is for the pie crust so that's three cups of all-purpose flour one teaspoon of salt three quarters cup of vegetable shortening or lard i use the crisco butter flavor you also get the three quarter cup of salted butter cut that into pieces um, and the reason you want to do that is that kind of makes sure if you cut it into pieces kind of like little b-sized pieces pea sized pieces and it's going to give you a flaky pie crust okay and then you also want one egg lightly beaten um, and then one tablespoon of distilled white vinegar that's going to help to the flakiness also of that pie crust for the filling what you want is one cup of granulated sugar three tablespoons of brown sugar one half teaspoon of salt one cup of corn syrup either light or dark i prefer the light through one third cup of melted salted butter by the way if you get the just regular butter and it's unsalted butter you can add about a half teaspoon of salt and then one teaspoon of vanilla three whole eggs you need to beat those and then one cup heaping cup of chopped pecans so anyway that's the recipe okay now we went on ahead and added a few of the ingredients I've added the one cup of sugar um, three tablespoons of brown sugar has been added there and then also we're going to add the corn syrup we've got the one-third cup of, of melted um, salted butter and then one teaspoon of vanilla and the three whole eggs those were one of the first things we did and then we're going to add the pecans in just a minute but i've got a hack for you you know when you measure out any, your syrup especially you know it's kind of stuck in inside you know your um measuring cup so here's the hack so i'm going to get just a little bit of the pan you can use the regular store brand and I'm just going to lightly spray it inside there. I like to use this for any ingredient that calls for peanut butter as well. Your peanut butter cookies and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is go on ahead and um, pour the syrup. And I want to cut. So here we go. There's the cut. We're going to put that in there. And what's going to be, it's going to be such an ease. And uh, it's going to be so easy to take out of that cut. And I believe that's going to be a cut. There we go. Go ahead and put the lid back on it because you know what's going to happen i'm going to spill it <laughs> and look at that it comes right out you gotta coax it just a little bit but take a look at that you've not wasted anything so there is all of the syrup um there are a couple of different uh, pecan pies that you can make. I like mine to be kind of syrupy like. You can do one that's kind of like a custard and you will add more um, of the eggs when you do that. It makes it real custardy type but we, we all just prefer this one. And so I've got almost everything in here. Everything except for the pecans. Okay I think that everything is stirred up really well. Don't you like the way that turned out? Look at that pretty cool and everything is beat up really good so I'm not seeing any lumps no sugar lumps the brown sugar is what you're going to see that'll lump up um, so anyway you just want to make sure you've got all of that stirred really well okay now let's go ahead I'll tell you what I'm going to do there's just a little bit of that syrup left in there so what I'm going to do is use this measuring cup for my pecans and here again I went on ahead and put these in the blender and so when the pie bakes, you know, for somebody maybe that, maybe someone older who really doesn't, can't eat the pecans really well, chopped up is really good, but we just like ours chopped up anyway. So it's all a preference thing. Some people want the whole ones in there. I think it's pretty when you use the whole. And then you could just make a little decoration. What you would want to do if you're going to use the whole pecans, what you would want to do Let's get your pecan. Let's pretend this is whole. That's going to be a little bit. So you want to put all of the pecans down in the bottom of the pan. 
And then what you would do is pour this mixture, the syrup mixture, on top of it, and it'll just naturally float up. But what'll happen is some of that syrup gets down here, um, gets on top of the pecans, and it's a real pretty glazy look. Um, when it is cooked. Okay, and also before we finish, let's go in ahead and, and uh, pie crust. I just like to get a fork and just gently, let's move this out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. So what I like to do is just gently get my fork. You need to dip it in a little bit of flour sometimes and just go around and make a pretty little look right around the edges. Okay, so even here where I pieced it, it's going to make that look good too. Okay. All right, because you want a pretty presentation. You want your food to be pretty. I remember when Phil and I first got married, there was something I made, like a salad or something. And I said, oh, it turned out really pretty. And he said, who cares what it looks like? It tastes good. I said, yeah, but women want their stuff to look pretty. So here we go. We've got this all the way around the bottom. Now, you can use your fingers and do little scallops. You can do all kinds of stuff with this. Now, one thing you can do as well, like if you want it to be really pretty, say I've got this knife right here, I'm going to go around and I could just go right around the edges and just cut off some of that excess. But I'm not going to do that all the way around. I just wanted to show you some of the things that you can do to make it look pretty. And so here we go. And see, it would give it a more polished look if that's the kind, if that's what you're looking for. But you know what? My bunch, we don't care what it looks like. <laughs> We're going to eat it. Okay, now let's go ahead and get that pie crust out of the way. Keeping up with what time it is. And I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, see how thick that syrup is. And let's go ahead and put the pecans in there. And see, I'm not wasting anything. It's going to get out that very last little bit of syrup. And that's the last cleanup for you to do as well. So here we go. Let's get the rest of that out. Let's go ahead and give it a good little stir. Bill is sitting in there. He's wanting me to hurry up and make this pie so he can start eating it. <laughs> so what a pretty color that is. So if you know of a farmer, you got a farmer, maybe you live somewhere around your neighborhood, buy your eggs from that farmer if they have chickens, because this really, it just, it's just so much prettier. It's almost like a mustard color. Um, but now I will say this too, the brown sugar also kind of have to have that pretty color as well. Now this is kind of thick. Now once you get everything together, you want to bake this pie for just about 30 minutes. You want to put a piece of foil on top of it for the first 30 minutes. Then after that, take it out of the oven, remove the foil, put it back into the oven again for about another 15 minutes. And that way, because what's going to happen is your pecans are going to rise up and uh, they're going to be right See, I've got some of the syrup in this pie. So there, some of it went on here. And see it all, that way I'm not wasting anything. And so we're taking care of that. Let's go ahead and put this down here. I'm going to get my knife. And look at that delicious looking pecan pie. Beautiful. You can do the same thing. No big deal. Now, I like to get everything out of my bowl. Now what's going to happen when this, right now you're not seeing any pecans, but magically what is going to happen is these pecans are going to float up to the top. Oh my goodness, I'm looking and I've got less than a minute left before we end the show. You know what? I love spending time with you. Time sure does fly when we're together. Again, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have an awesome rest of the day, and you take good care, okay? It's so good being with you today. And I hope you learned something. And if you would like for me to send you this recipe, all you have to do is send me your email address. That's Donna at AfternoonDriveHome.com. Donna at AfternoonDriveHome.com. And I'll be glad to copy and paste and send this recipe to you. You take care, okay? Have a great day.